What we've discovered over, I think, the past 10 or 15 years is that you need sleep after learning to essentially hit the save button on those new memories so that you don't forget. But recently we've discovered that it's not just about sleeping after learning, you also need to sleep before learning. And now to actually prepare your brain. And without sleep, those memory circuits within the brain effectively become waterlogged and you can't absorb information. So let me show you the evidence. Here in this study, we actually decided to test the hypothesis that pulling the all-nighter was a good idea. We took a group of healthy adults and we assigned them to one of two experimental conditions, a sleep group and a sleep deprivation group. Now, the sleep group, we're going to give them a full eight hours of shut-eye across the night. The deprivation group, we're going to keep awake all night in the laboratory under full supervision. And then we're going to actually place them inside an MRI scanner the next day and have them try and learn a whole list of new facts as we're taking snapshots of brain activity. And then we're going to test them to see how effective that learning has been. And when you put those two groups head to head, what you find is a quite significant 40% deficit in the ability of the brain to make new memories without sleep. Just to sort of frame that in context, it would be the difference between acing an exam and failing it miserably. And we've gone on to discover what actually goes wrong within the brain to produce these types of learning disabilities. And there's a structure on the left and the right side of your brain called the hippocampus. Think of the hippocampus like the informational inbox of your brain. It's very good at receiving new memory files and holding on to them. And when we looked at this structure in those people who'd had a full night of sleep, what we saw was lots of healthy learning-related activity. Yet in those people who were sleep-deprived, we actually couldn't find any significant signal whatsoever. It's almost as though sleep deprivation had shut down your memory inbox. And any new incoming files, they were just being bounced. You couldn't effectively commit new experiences to memory. But let me actually just come back to that control group. Do you remember those people who got a full eight hours of sleep? We can ask a very different question here. What is it about the physiological quality of sleep when you do get it that actually restores and boosts your learning and memory ability each and every day. And what we've discovered by placing electrodes all over the head is that there are big, powerful brain waves that happen during the very deepest stages of sleep that have riding on top of them these spectacular bursts of electrical activity called sleep spindles. And it's the combined quality of these deep sleep brain waves that actually acts like a file transfer mechanism at night. It actually takes memories from a short-term vulnerable reservoir and shifts them across to a more permanent long-term storage site in the brain so that you protect those memories, you remember rather than forget, and you wake up with a refreshed learning ability all over again. Let me tell you about one area that we've now moved this work out into medically, which is the context of aging and dementia. Because I think we all know that as we progress in life, our learning and memory abilities start to deteriorate, start to decline. But what we also know is that a physiological signature of aging is that your sleep gets worse. And not just any type of sleep, by the way, especially that deep quality of sleep that I was just describing. And only last year we published evidence that these two factors are not simply just co-occurring, they are significantly interrelated. And it suggests that the disruption of deep sleep is an underappreciated factor that is contributing to what we call cognitive decline or memory decline in aging and most recently we've discovered in Alzheimer's disease as well. Now I know this is remarkably depressing news. I understand. But there is a possible silver lining here. Because unlike many of the other factors that we know are associated with aging and dementia, those are fiendishly difficult to treat right now. But that sleep is a missing piece in the explanatory puzzle 
of aging and Alzheimer's is exciting because we may be able to do something about it. And one way that we are approaching this in my sleep center is, is not by using sleeping pills, by the way, I should note. Unfortunately and sadly, they do not produce naturalistic sleep, and they've also been associated with a higher risk of death and cancer. Instead, we are actually developing a method based on this technique. It is called direct current brain stimulation. You apply electrode pads to the head, and you insert a small amount of voltage into the brain. And so small, you tend not to feel it, but it actually has a measurable impact on those brain waves. Now, if you apply this stimulation during sleep in young, healthy adults, as if you're sort of singing in time with those deep sleep brain waves, not only can you actually amplify the size of those deep sleep brain waves, but in doing so, you almost double the amount of memory benefit that you get from sleep. The question now is whether we can translate this same affordable, potentially portable piece of technology into older adults and those with dementia. Can we restore back some healthy quality of deep sleep? And in doing so, can we salvage aspects of learning and memory function? Thank you.